What is up, my streaming tweets? How are you all doing? And welcome back to From the Depths, where we are currently in the designer mode because I have something absolutely epically awesome, awesome, awesome to show you. So if you do like what you see, please remember to smash that like and subscribe button. Like they owe you money. So let's just get on with it. So are you all ready? And boom. There it is. The most epically awesomely, awesomely epic carrier of awesomeness and stuff and things. There we go. That is it. The end. Goodbye. No, not really. We have to go through the weapons and all of that good stuff. So give me a second. Uh, let's see what we're going to be starting off with. Right. First thing that I want to show you is that we are supposed to be staying at an altitude of uh, one meter. But currently we are out of power, out of materials. And I don't know why we're not getting materials stuff back into here because we are in designer mode. But whatever. So this is usually floating like here. This is where the actually no down here. This is where the the watermark is pretty much, or just you know just on that on that block there, where the crosshair is. That is our water level, so that you know we should be a bit higher. Uh, so that's the first thing. First, the other bit of beeswax is this is our main weapon. I guess no, actually our main weapon are probably the bombers. Definitely, yeah, the bombers are the main weapon. But these guys are for uh, boaties and subs. And these guys are for anti-air. So, our booties and subs, this is the sort of setup that we're going with. You know, if you guys have a better setup, please let me know in the box, in the down there. I'll be more than happy to change things and swap things up a bit. Also, we have a lot of room to expand on. The ammo we can probably expand on a little bit more, that is for sure. So, you know, what I was trying to look for is um, trying to keep our rate of fire of the torpedoes high. Um, you know, with passive ammo generation, and these guys, yeah, it's it's working pretty damn well. Uh, the the rate of fire, we do have a little bit of a, a stagger on it though. So that is this is if if you use this like a rate of fire, the stagger the stagger in seconds, pretty much that is you know that is the sort of speed that we're going with. Uh, there is no other other restrictions whatsoever except for a constraint that we can only fire that way, that way, and in front over here, towards there, over that way. Uh, those are the only directions we can fire in. The reason for that is if we have a target, you know, over on the other side of the island, you know, our little control center th thing there, um, that if we are firing a torpedo, it can U-turn and just smack us in the ass and cause a hell of a lot of problems for us and not for the enemy. So we do have that issue. Our air, our anti-air missiles, uh, they're fine. We got no no problems whatsoever. They come out and they go, you know, they double back. No problem, no problem there at all. Uh, these are anti-air missiles. Again. We can, well, no, actually, we can't really expand on these guys, can we? Yes, we can. Of course we can. Yes, indeed, we can expand on our anti-air missiles. That is also no problem at all, as long as our connectors don't hit this connection down here. And that's pretty much it. So, yes, we can indeed expand on them. So, if you guys have a better idea or a better setup, then please let me know in a box, in a down there. Remember, we're trying to keep up with ammo consumption. However, these missiles will only fire if there is an air target. If the if it's like a, a, a boat or, you know, a surface target, they won't fire. So, keep that in mind as well. So, that's sort of like our main weapon of the of the carrier. You know, not counting the bombers being the, the totally main main thing. So our lasers over here, our lasers are pretty much, we are, all we want to do is to cripple any air targets. Now fair enough, they're going to be firing at, you know, surface targets, they're going to be firing at them, no problem at all. But we want these, you know, if they're not going to kill an air target, we just want them to cripple the air target to get it in the water as soon as possible for our torpedoes and our bombers to, uh, you know, get rid of. So with these guys, uh, that is that is the damage output that we are going with, and we are always maintaining damage of the next so shot at uh, 2160 with the 30 AP. We are maintaining that because over here we have set up a firing delay of 0 0.7 on every on every one of these uh, lasers. Which we have you know three there, three there, three over there, and three on this side. So we, yeah, we are maintaining that damage output there. Um, our power generation keeps up, you know. We don't have any shields yet. I don't know if I'm going to be putting shields on just yet. Um, but so far, you know, we are keeping up. Um, I'll show you the uh, ammo gen, uh, sorry, the uh, energy generation in a mo. 
This, however, this is the most favorite thing that I have on this whole damn <laughs> carrier. This, this little thing here is the thing that I love most about this carrier. This is just only for uh, anti-missiles. This is only anti-missile stuff only. Um, what will happen is, you know, the, the turret is connected to the um, thingy, the thingy doodle of the, the anti-missile nest. There it is. The anti-missile kind of controller. Um, to get this to actually work properly, to have it to, to look at, you know, to turn towards the, the incoming missile, we have to set the acceptable uh, angle to engage. We have to set it down to 0 0.01. And like that, it will it will rotate, you know, and look at um, incoming missiles. The only problem is, unfortunately, we can't put the laser transceivers on another turret. So, you know, as you can see, we have, you know, a 360 turret here. And you can put, like, an elevation turret to have this middle bit, you know, look up and down like this. Or up and down, whichever way. Um, like that. So we can't have two, uh, two turrets because we can't. Well, we can attach the laser transceiver. The only thing is the laser transceiver won't be able to connect to, to the laser thingy madoodle system itself. So that is one thing that has really sort of like, you know, upset me a little bit because I wanted to have this thing, these two, to rotate inside this this armor here. So that was, you know, that was the, the first idea. But, you know, then I figured out, ah, we can't have, you know, laser transceivers on two turrets. So fair enough, game. You've won there. Um, over here, I'll show you the set the, the setup for the for the lamp, for the anti-missile lamps in a mode. This is another uh, setup here. So every node. So, OK, for the anti-missiles, these these turrets, the, the, the little little R2D2 turrets over here, um, they're set up. So one node per system. They they're not they don't have a system split up with, you know, three or four nodes. It's one node per system. But with the crams, it's three nodes per system, which I've got set up down below, which I'll show you as well in a moment. So this is our anti crams only and the these guys are just our anti missiles only. So I'll be showing you those in a mo. Over here, I was experimenting like with the elevate uh, the elevation, the elevation of like where would we put the these these uh, simple lasers? Now these simple lasers, I mean, I was gonna try to have either this guy or something similar to this guy, but then you know we have to keep in mind the ammo consumption and our main sort of weapon is the torpedoes. So I didn't want to sort of like end up with no ammo and everything is struggling to 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 shoot something. So I was going to go with something like this, um, just you know, two two clips, something you know, very small, like th this thirty-six millimeter with six barrels, and yeah, two clips here. So this one is set up as follows: we have the three hundred sixty, you know, the the one axis turret over here. We have. Another one axis turret. We could have used an elevation turret, but I just stuffed on a one axis, you know, sitting sideways like this. Attached to that, we have the the APS firing piece. So the AI that you can see, which is you know clipping through that um, firing piece, is actually attached to the 360 turret here. So that is how it's clipping through there, and then you know we we pull out uh, gauge increaser, which also clipping through it. We have the whole wireless receiver, and like this, you know the the turret can elevate fully, you know go elevate fully and spin fully as well with no problems whatsoever. So we do have a bit of clipping and sort of like glitching that's going on there. So I don't know how how you guys look at these sort of things if it's like too exploity, too cheaty ish to do something like that so I could probably try to set up something else another time but like I said you know trying to look after the ammo consumption as the ammo generation is done passively so down here this is where where that APS would have gone or the other uh, auto simple auto cannon would have gone and over here I am experimenting to see you know which do I prefer and which do you guys prefer do you guys prefer to see this uh, one axis turret here sunk into this heavy armor, but the only problem is that we have this eyesore of the corners open up like that. So we do have that as a bit of an eyesore, but which would look better. So yeah, leave me your comments and suggestions as to what you think looks better, having them down here like this or having them up here like this. Hopefully you guys can tell me in the box, in the down there as well. 
Um, I don't know about the the anti-missile though, if I want it down there or not. But, you know, I probably will end up doing everything a bit uniform. If you guys say put it down, then we'll put it down. The other thing that we have to consider is this little ridge down here, or insert, I should say, um, that we're going to have a bit of a turret is going to be showing down here. So there is that to think about as well. But all of them work. Uh, all of them work perfectly. Uh, they they can you know rotate up and and down and all of that good stuff. Because these ones uh, these are on the one axis attached to an elevation turret, and then our AI I believe is attached to the elevation turret. I can't remember. I can't remember. If, no, I think it's actually attached to the, to the one axis here. And yeah. So the only thing that is rotating, you know, on the elevation side of things is just the simple laser only. The this um, armor sort of setup is is attached only to the one axis down here. And as you can see, we have another set of the three lasers. Over here in the back, in the down here. So we are at the back. <laughs> at the back, I don't know the booty, the booty names of things, of the sides and all of that. This, I think, later on, I will be converting it into a proper lift. Uh, so we will be prefabbing this whole thing, and down here we shall set up, you know, an elevation piston, uh, telescopic piston thing to push this up and down. And probably have it open up with something like this on the deck here. Um, you know, to have it either slide to the left and well to the front and to the back, or just have it, you know, open with the with the rotating um with a rotating block, spin block. So that's one idea. I don't know what the hell I can fit into this to launch from this, to be honest. But at the end of the day we can always leave it as is as well. So that is that section. Around here at the back we again we have another set of the simple lasers set up. And again we're sort of like repeating the whole thing uh, on this side. Except where the only difference is that down here I've set these lasers up. I've sunk them in because if they were sitting on top of this heavy armor here they wouldn't be able to do anything really. That's it. They're stuck. They wouldn't be able to move nothing. So that is why they're sunk down into there because of the way you know things are, are built. <laughs> the way things have been fitted. That is how I had to you know sort that out and get that you know looking like that. So th that gives you a good idea as to you know if we did this all the way around the place, you know, would it look good or not? But then we have to remember that you know some of the some of the turret is going to be showing off under here in some areas. Another set of the the anti cram nodes, and again those guys are sunk in, and are uh, you know one of our you know secondary or primary secondary or primary weapons. Down here, on the underside, we have a couple of these things. Those um, these hydrofoils. I'm going to get rid of these hydrofoils from from that. Sure, load of load of hydrofoils just to sort our pitch out, keep it at the zero, um, and for our you know for our hover uh, up and down kind of thing, our altitude. So that is the underside. We do have some anti-roll as well going on, some for the pitch. Um, I think we've got probably one or two on hover as well on the down here. We got a couple of exhausts because the engine room is absolutely stupidly big, which I'm going to show you in a mo. So before we get to the engine room, a quick look from the above here. The eye candy stuff is not finished, that is for sure. Um, I think in terms of the build, we are probably sort of like 80% uh, done. But it is definitely usable in the campaign. And why do I say it's 80% done? Is because, you know, on the inside, I don't have any, any walkie way stuff and things done just yet. So we've got a couple of detection stuff going on up here. Um... Yeah, line of sight downwards and downwards shouldn't be working, but we've got a decent view from the out, you know, as these things can pass from the glass. Our chimney thing, <laughs> our chimney thing is set up on a piston and a spin block. As you can see, we've got a couple of, of a bit of glitchy clippiness going on. Now, something I have to tidy up later because I wanted our chimney to sort of like stick out like that. 
and get you know have a have have a flat top here i have been using a reference uh, that is for sure so once this whole thing is complete properly then i'll be showing the reference you know and so on where i got the the whole idea from so i'll be showing that you know once we're done but that is the little island thing sorted out or shown i should say uh, a couple of detection bits and pieces some more detection we do have a detector a de 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 detection thing in here as well <laughs> So we do have the proper, we have the proper radar being hidden by a mimic radar, just to get you know a bit of size thing going on there. Uh, so yeah, that's that bit. We do have some munition detectors, uh, you know, static, you know, so they're not moving around the place. Down here, we do have a couple more detection. We have some of the coincidence rage finders poking through these beautiful holes over here so this thing actually works as you can see you know it's got a clear line of sight because we can we can use those it's pretty damn neat pretty damn awesome i like that Alrighty, so that was the outside of things now we're going to do the inside of things uh where should we start from we might as well start from the front and work ourselves to the back oh so, yeah this is a bit of a, a bit of a rotate -y thing we do little stuff down here what i did want to do is i wanted to have the hydrofoils on the outsides and have uh, propulsions behind them, except that the thing is, which which is strange to me, is that you can't have hydrofoils in front of your main of, of the propulsion because the propulsion would be blocked. To me, that sounds a little bit strange, you know, for that. I mean, it's not like you have a, a, a like a, a metal block stuff in front of it, so you would have thought that the force of the the, the propeller would would still work even though there's a hydrofoil in front of it. But anyway, that's a different thing. Nothing entirely doesn't matter. So in the inside over here, we have uh metal <laughs> we have the beginnings of uh power so this is our steam steam setup this is just for our batteries and that is it this is only powering batteries so we have a couple of these a couple of those um so like this is one system like that um so these things are supposed to come on as follows so you know if the battery is within zero to sixty percent then um it should turn everything, all the all the all the steamy stuff on, and if we're within you know ninety eight to hundred percent, then it will should set them to ten percent. Yeah, ten percent is a good is, is is supposed to be good enough just to keep you know the the basics working. Um, we need our air stuff and things. So that is that over here. We have no 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 sorry under here, <laughs> under here we have water. No, on the up here that is exactly <laughs> on the upside over here we have our fuel storage uh it could be expanded on we got a crap load of space inside there down here there is nothing am i right there is nothing here these i'm experimenting with these uh metal uh heavy heavy armor cylinder things um i'm using them just to protect these guys these connections so i still have a couple of places where i need to do that so if you don't think we need heavy armor and could probably just get away with wood then let me know in the box in the down there and i can most definitely swap these out because you know the extra weight you know can, can be gotten rid of um i mean not for the price the price is already stupidly exaggeratedly high anyway so changing them to wood just for the price isn't going to make any difference really over here we have our battery set up our batteries and our fuel is is in one one area should close this off on the side so down here we should you know put some wood to close this off into a room for itself uh, like I said, we're trying to, I don't know if I said it or not, but we are, I am trying to keep this place, you know, uh, walkable, so we're going to have a walkway down here, um, we can be able to, if, if this was like a real thing, you know, access to your batteries and so on like that, um, then we come into our first set of weapons, yep, so we have three of these down here, like so and we have another three over here these are for our front three lasers on each side so that's you know our six lasers on the front weapons so we have these guys this is how they're set up um if you guys have a better setup or better idea how to you know for, for this for this length uh which i think is about what like i don't know how long this is but you guys have an idea uh so for this length if you guys have a better setup then please please let me know in the box in the down there so this is you know one of the one of the laser weapons like so actually it shouldn't be 4 ap it should be more uh excuse me why is you like that hmm 
So yeah, that is, you know, those are attached to these guys over here. This is their, their outputs, really, the, the damage of the next shot, which I've already shown you good people. Uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? So moving on from the here. Yeah, and like I said, this is supposed to be, you know, all walkable and so on. This is our uh, AI mainframe and so on. Uh, we don't have anything in the breadboard, really. I was just trying to experiment with the whole resource gathering um, thing for our boat, except it doesn't really go to the whole, you know, resource ring and doesn't really stop. It keeps on going. Mind you, our turn ratio is absolutely and utterly crap. So there is that thing, you know, obviously, you know, bad designing from my end of things. This is one of the... Um, Anti-missile nodes, so one of these per per node, like so. So that's our anti-missile. So we have what? How many do we have? We have one, two, three, um, and that is it. Four, four of you with this guy on the front here. So we have four of those only. So we got you know four of of these guys. So yeah, like I said, I'm trying to keep this place walkable, so we've already got a bit of a setup of a, of a door there, you know, we're trying to uh, probably set up a door down down that way as well. Um, don't have any repair bots yet, so we do have to find a place to put some repair bots and all that good stuff. Over here we... <laughs> oh Jesus. Uh, over here we have our engine room, which is all the way... <laughs> it starts all the way down here. Um... Yes, as you can hear, we got some Diddy Blades on the sides, because the the speed without those Diddy Blades is about 6 ms, and my god, man, 6 ms in the map view, it's it's too painfully slow for my patience, so I, I checked a couple of the Diddy Blades on there. Uh, we have a crap load of these guys, so we have 1, 2, 3, uh, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7. Of these guys set up and they're going all the way down there I believe when when it's on when everything is working fully this the the fuel per second is about 0 0.5 fuel per second and uh, it's giving us a crap load of well crap load of power it is giving us pretty much right on the spot of the power that we need to power the 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 main weapons and the lambs and so on and so forth we don't have any shields just yet so, you know, this is going all the way down uh, to the bottom there. We've got some more fuel as well stashed away in here. So we got all of these guys, you know, pretty much repeated set up. Fully expandable, so, you know, you can you keep on adding on to it if you want. So the question is, if you guys have a better engine set up that's going to give, like, you're going to use hardly any fuel whatsoever, Please, please uh, let me know in the box, in the down there. Try to give me the total uh, power output as well uh, that the engines would provide. And I would definitely upgrade or swap them out because, as you can see, this place is ridiculously, ridiculously huge, massive, big. And uh, I think for the, in terms of space, really, we could have gotten something better, either outputting more power, using the same amount of fuel. So like I said, um, once you highlight on the engine part of things uh, at full usage, that would be about 0 0.5 fuel per second. But we'll double check that during the campaign. The most important bit of this build as to why the hell did I end up creating a bloody carrier for is not these, these are the uh, these are the six weapons on the back. So remember to put your storage laser cavities wherever you have pumps. You cannot have a branch with storage laser cavities on their own because the whole thing doesn't work and it took me about two hours to figure that out because I'm absolutely stupid. <laughs> there you go. So remember, storage laser cavities have to go on the pumps. You can't have storage laser cavities on their own. And that's that. There we go. Uh, so we have uh, another six of these, you know, set up here uh, for our, our side weapons. You know, we've got the, the six on that side and six on that side. But the most important thing for this build is the reason behind this build is the refinery bloody fuel production, which uh, isn't working because it's under bloody water right now. But this is the reason. And it does work because we, we usually have a positive altitude between one and two. Uh, when everything is working properly, I can even get that up to 3 or 5 as well. So I've actually had to set our uh, hover PID, you know, down to like 1.52 to keep it there. 
So this is the refinery. Unfortunately, I can't hit the max efficiency, and I don't know why. Um, I think it was a 78 uh, flares, 14 of th of these guys, and eight of these. So unfortunately, when I try to get, I think 14 or the eight of these, um, I can't fit them on. It's, uh, it's saying like you know, pretty much you've used all all the components, so they show up in red, like not being connected. So I do have that issue. Don't know why that is happening. I've either probably calculated something absolutely stupidly wrong as always. So this is the main reason behind the whole bloody carrier thing. This is why I want to have a carrier to, you know, how to... Because of our stupidly, ridiculously uh, custom jet engine fuel usage. <laughs> that is the reason behind it. So that is why we have that, this, you know, the whole build really. So that is that. Um, it's not taking up that much space. I'm pretty sure there is more compact uh, ver variants out there. That's for sure. The other question I do have for you, good people, is should we go with the actual, you know, uh, a full-on, you know, the the max efficiency refinery, or should we have gone a smaller refinery that's not so efficient but producing fuel quicker? So tell me what you guys think in the box in the down there for a mobile refinery. Over here we have our ammo, which is, oh my god, oh my lord, which is wrapped around with, this time I was using wood, wood poles uh, going around our ammo here, and I have totally forgot to add in the, the bits over here, so yeah, I've got those to add in, so we have two two boxes, you know, like that, next to each other. So as you can see, we do have you know a bit of space to um, expand on. The only problem is like, as you know, the AI enemy AI is always aiming somewhere around here. So what I might do in the future is places for shields are probably going to be around these two weapons here at the back. Definitely have to armor up these guys here somehow without without them looking stupid as well. Because uh, unfortunately, you know, that's the only, the only place that you can have laser transceiver is right underneath the the turret itself. The so the 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 turret block itself. Unfortunately, we cannot have it at the back or anywhere else, which can bugger up a couple of builds. But there you go. Can't do any much with that. So we'll probably have to find or armor this up a little bit better. But over here, I'm thinking of adding a couple of shields. You know, down down here as well. But well, a few with a few, you know, tests. Um, they're it's pretty sturdy, you know. There's nothing much getting through. There's not a lot of damage being done when we do get hit. But you know, haven't really full on tested the whole build yet. You know, just you know, a couple of couple of kingsteads here and there. Uh, well, just one kingstead really, and that was that. So yeah, we do have some space down here, you know, in between here. But you're not really going to fit anything here because. You know, that's, that's one light alloy block thick. But like I said, we have a crap load of space up here that we can add stuff, any any good ideas that, you know, will uh, complement the, the build, really. Um, I mean, if, it, if it's more ammo, I don't really know, but I'll probably, we could probably put some over here. Uh, just make sure to, you know, armor it up properly, because as you can see, right now, this is just one thick. So, obviously, I have to go through, probably going to add um, just another layer of metal, really, because we are a little bit heavy. Um, well, actually, we can probably definitely try with the heavy armor and see how that goes, for sure. A couple of, uh, you know, material gatherers, um, and that's pretty much it for this build. So, hopefully, you guys are, you know, excited to see this uh, working, you know, uh, up and running. So hopefully you good people are going to be patient enough to wait for the let's play of the campaign because that is where we'll be showing this guy off working fully. Hopefully you've enjoyed this build. I have spent so long making it that it has driven, driven me crazy. So hopefully you know the next bit of business is tuning up our other other builds and then we're going to be starting a build for a, a flying fortress that was a comment left in one of the, the previous uploads 
uh, Flying Fortress. So if you good people have any decent ideas for a Flying Fortress or images or, you know, you guys have seen a film with some sort of Flying Fortress or something of the sort that you like and you can think that it will be absolutely awesome to have in-game with, with a crap load of turrets and so on and so forth, then please try and let me know in the box in the down there as to what sort of fortress you think you would like to see made. But that's going to be a little while longer because right now I'm feeling a little bit burnt out on the builds. This thing has taken me like 10 days since I last uploaded to build it and also tweaking up the bombs because the bombs were driving me absolutely and utterly crazy that they stopped dive bombing on me. And uh, then you, you sort them out and then the next day they, they stopped working again. So <laughs> I don't know what the hell was up. It wasn't any updates. It was just, I don't know, it was just messing up with me. And yeah, I really have no idea why they, they stopped working. So every time I used to come in, used to mess around here, spend a couple of hours trying to figure out what the hell are they not, you know, diving for. Or they're just diving too much and they're really not obeying, uh, you know, anything that I'm changing. Uh, then I was realizing that, you know, with every change that I was doing in the breadboard, you have to pull it out, put it back in again before you see those changes happen. And then after a while, you might start to see it behaving differently than it was. Like, you know, it either just nose dives straight into the water. So then, you know, just restart the game and then it was working properly. So I don't know what's going on, but it's probably something that I've done wrong myself somewhere. But we have a couple of tweaks. Uh, you know, well, we can add definitely much more piping for our pack. That is for sure. We have a load of space left in here. Uh, for the cram, the cram, I have tweaked it a little bit more. Just a little bit. So, uh, down here, uh, this is the sort of thing that we're going with now. It works wonders. It has one shot a Kingstead a very few times. Very few times it has one shot a Kingstead. So, you know... That is that, pretty much, for, for this build. So, the bits and pieces that are left is the interior walkways and so on for, for, the, for the carrier. A couple of exterior, um, you know, eye candy stuff. These guys, these guys, as you can see, you know, there's a couple of bits and pieces missing. Um, these are, obviously, they're not finished yet. They still have quite a bit of eye candy to do. Still have to do the shielding on, on as you can see here. On these custom jet engines they're just you know showing showing up like that you know these have to be covered up and so on and so forth inside here don't know what i'm going to be using this for just yet and still haven't set these guys to open and close but i'll probably do that or you know just leave it as is as you can see look, there's a couple of gaps and so on places where they can easily get hit and destroyed so these aren't finished yet so that's what i'm going to hopefully be doing is uh tweaking up the rest of the builds as well before we start on the massive uh, flying fortress castle thing, I don't even know if I'm going to do it as a a fortress AI, or you know with with the, with the fortress E jet things, or try to have it with you know either custom jet engines keeping it afloat or something of the sort. So hopefully you good people can let tell me in the box and down there. Remember, I would love to see some images, ideas, and and all of that good stuff to go with it. So I have something you know to know what you guys are sort of looking for in terms of a flying castle with weapons <laughs> so remember if you have liked what you've seen today please remember to smash that like and subscribe button like they owe you money we will be seeing this in action in the campaign so hopefully you guys are looking forward for that so please stay tuned that should be coming out either today as well with this upload or tomorrow so yeah that is going to happen very very soon can't wait to get this thing in the goddamn campaign but the thing is with this thing is it's 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 very expensive <laughs> it is too expensive jesus that's a lot of that's a lot of farming that i have to do in game my god i'm gonna have to leave the game probably running like the whole week <laughs> but yeah that is the 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 size of it and all the other good bits and pieces that go with it. So that's the, the cost right now. Not including the 70... I don't know if that's including the cost for the bombers. But the bombers are all... They're 70k each. So we also have those to think about as well. But anyway, my awesome YouTubians, like I said, please leave comments, thoughts, and suggestions in the box, in or down there. They'll be much appreciated. Definitely do something with them for sure. You know, obviously, I always try to put anything you guys say in the game. So if you do have any ideas, please let me know. But for now, my awesome YouTubians, I'm going to call it here, and uh, I'll catch you all on the next one.